topic is identification and management of charcoal rata soybeans. I'm Doug Jardine, and I'm an extension plant pathologist at Kansas State University. Charcoal rot is one of the most serious diseases of soybeans in the United States. Each year, plant pathologists record disease loss estimates for all of the major diseases. In the most recent summary we have, which covers from 1999 to 2002, as you can see on the slide here, charcoal rot is the number three disease pest with regard to bushels lost on an annual basis, the number one pest being soybean cyst nematode at 35.4 million bushels per acre across the United States, followed by Phytophthora root rot at 9.9 .9 million bushels, and then next in line is charcoal rot at 7.1 million bushels. The fungus that causes charcoal rot, Macrophemina phaseolina, has a very large host range. There's over 500 known hosts within the major field crops. Those crops that are known to be a host of charcoal rot include not only soybean, but also corn, grain sorghum, and sunflowers. Charcoal rot is a problem across much of the United States. Previously, it had been thought to be primarily a southern production area because of the conditions that are favorable for its development. However, in recent years, it has been reported in the northern soybean growing regions as far north as Iowa and even up into southern Minnesota. With charcoal rot, even though the disease symptoms don't develop to later in the season, the actual infection takes place very early after planting in the spring, usually within the first three to four weeks after planting. Once infection has occurred, the disease remains dormant in the plant until the reproductive stages of development. When favorable conditions occur during the later part of the growing season, then the disease symptoms will begin to appear. Those conditions that are most favorable for development include extended periods of drought stress and soil temperatures greater than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Symptoms generally occur in the driest parts of the field. As you can see in the photo here, the charcoal rot symptoms are developing along the tree belt where the trees are competing with the soybeans for moisture. Other areas that you're likely to find symptoms of charcoal rot in the field are in compacted areas, such as the entranceways to the field where we get a lot of equipment traffic, also sandy areas in the field, and along terrace tops. If you take a look at the photo here, we have healthy plants on the right and charcoal rot infected plants on the left. You can see that charcoal rot typically reduces plant height, can reduce root volume, and root weight by more than 50%. The first symptoms of charcoal rot are generally a wilting that occurs during the day, and then as we get into the evening hours, the plant will recover and become turgid again. But after a, a period of a few days, the wilting becomes more permanent, and that is followed by the beginning of a general yellowing of the plants. So if you take a look at the photo here, and we'll come back to this photo in a few slides, but the area in green are plants that are healthy. The area to the right of the slide are the initial symptoms of charcoal rot where you're starting to see some yellowing. And then in the top left-hand corner, you see some plants that are already turning brown, and those are the advanced stages of charcoal rot. With continued heat stress and drought stress, the plants will go from yellowing to completely dead. One of the characteristics of the disease is that the leaves will remain attached to the plant. So in the photo here, you can see in the foreground that these plants have been killed by charcoal rot and their leaves are attached. If you look to the background of this picture, you will see that the rest of the field appears to be wilting. And again, if drought stress continues, those plants will begin to turn yellow and die as well. In the next few slides, we'll take a little closer look at the symptoms of charcoal rot. On this particular slide, we have two photos. If we take a look at the photo on the left, you'll see two plants. The one on the right is a healthy plant, and you can see that as we split the taproot, there is a very nice white coloration to it. Compare that to the plant on the left where we split the taproot, we see a distinct black discoloration in the root. If we look at the photo on the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see a little bit discoloration that we have an internal browning. When you see this particular symptom with the browning, you need to be a little bit careful as there are other diseases that uh, have a similar type of symptom. A couple of examples of that would be brown stem rot of soybeans and also sudden death syndrome. 
So you need to be careful when looking at the root discoloration and making a determination of whether you have charcoal rot or not. If you look very carefully at the plant, perhaps with a hand lens, you will see that at the soil line or just below it, if you peel away the outer layer of tissue known as the epidermis, you will see numerous black fruiting structures called sclerotia just underneath that epidermis. And this is by far the most distinguishing characteristic of charcoal rot disease. In this slide, we're looking at a couple of the above ground symptoms of charcoal rot. The top photo shows those microsclerotia embedded into the epidermis of the tissue, and the photo below shows where the stem has been split and embedded in the pith and cortex, again, then, are those same black sclerotia. Because charcoal rot causes the plant to die prematurely, seed size is greatly reduced, resulting in reduced yields. As we can see in the photo here, we have two sets of seed. The seed on the right-hand side was taken from healthy plants that matured normally. The seed on the left-hand side was taken from plants from the same field that had been prematurely killed by charcoal rot. There are no magic bullets for the control of charcoal rot, as it does not respond to any of the currently available fungicides. So management is done by a series of cultural practices. One of the most important is crop rotation. On the screen is some data from some studies conducted a few years ago in Kansas at our Parsons Experiment Station in southeast Kansas. We were looking at two rotations in the study, one rotation being continuous soybean, the other being a typical corn-soybean rotation. The middle column shows the number of sclerotia in a gram of root tissue. Research has shown that these numbers are indicative of the level of infection. You can see that in continuous soybean, we have almost twice the number of sclerotia per gram of root tissue as we did in a corn and soybean rotation. And if you look at the column on the right then, this has a direct effect on yield with about a three bushel yield difference when we use crop rotation in this particular case. Besides crop rotation, another important management tool is to control plant populations. In the photo that we have on this slide, we have a study where we were planting soybeans at a seeding rate of 3, 6, or 12 seeds per foot. You can see that where we had the reduced plant populations, or the three plants per foot, the plants are still green. Where the seeding rate was increased to 6 seeds per foot, we have the beginning symptoms of charcoal rot with uh, the yellowing that's apparent. And then on the far left-hand side of the photo, we had a seeding rate of 12 seeds per foot, and those plants are already in advanced stages of disease development. The reason that reducing the seed population works is that you have fewer plants competing for the available moisture, and in dry seasons, if there's more moisture to go around, you will have less charcoal rot. Other charcoal rot management principles revolve around the conservation of soil moisture. The most important thing that can be done to control charcoal rot is the use of irrigation. However, irrigation is not available on a large number of the soybean acres in the United States. A second thing that can be done is the use of a no-till tillage system. By keeping cover on the ground, we preserve soil moisture and allow for greater pod fill before the drought symptoms may begin to occur that would bring on the advanced stages of charcoal rot. Just a couple of other things that can be done is to reduce soil compaction so that when we do get rainfall, we get better penetration of the soil and use more of the water that's available and also to reduce weed competition since they will directly remove moisture that would otherwise be available to the soybean plant. So to summarize today's presentation, charcoal rot of soybeans is the third most important disease of soybeans in the United States after soybean cyst nematode and phytophthora root rot. Charcoal rot generally is going to occur in the driest part of the field and is favored by hot, droughty temperatures. Symptoms are going to include premature dying, and the formation of tiny black sclerotia on the root underneath the epidermis or embedded into the stem or cortex of the plants. Charcoal rot management will include crop rotation, reduction of plant populations, and anything that can be done to conserve soil moisture. This concludes our presentation on charcoal rot. For further information on charcoal rot, please feel free to contact me at the email address or the telephone number listed on the screen.